doing, Teacher Pio? I'm just observing the ants. Look how cute they are. What? Ants? What's so interesting about ants? A lot of things. The more I study about ants, the more I find these little tiny insects interesting, like mind-blowing. Do you want to know some facts about ants? Okay, here, here, here are some of them. Do you know that ants can actually lift up to 20 times of their own body weight? It's like uh, if I'm 65 kg and if I'm as strong as an ant, I'm able to lift a car. Wow, that's very strong for a tiny ant. It is, it is, it is. And ants are social insects. It's like you won't see them all alone by themselves. They always live in large colonies. And, you know, sometimes a single colony can consist of millions of ants. They are never lonely. And also, another interesting fact about ants is that they do not have ears or lungs. They hear the sound vibration by sensing it with their feet. And they can breathe with all the tiny little dots that they have all over their body. I guess ants won't have bad breaths when they're talking to each other. <laughs> Speaking of breath, the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So that means it's time for you and me to worship the Lord. Let's go! Feel the wonder, say his name, watch the darkness. Slip away, put your power on display Say goodbye to fear and shame Show me the path 
In a blink of an eye, it's already the third week of January. I'm sure we all have hopes and plans for the new year. Do you know what a New Year's resolution is? Do you set New Year's resolutions? Yes. One of the most exciting things about going into a new year is actually setting goals for how you can better yourself and the world around you. Uh, it's such a common practice that people have made lists of the most popular ones. Through our extensive research on Google, we have compiled a list of top three New Year resolutions. So here, how they, how they go. The third place goes to getting organized. Everybody know that kids sometimes struggle to be organized. Here's a tip. You can't find your pet hamster because of all the dirt laundry on your floor. Maybe the new year is the right time for you to re-examine your cleanness. But the truth is, adults also sometimes have the same struggle. Isn't that true, Teacher Elisha? <laughs> That's right. Getting neat and organized is indeed a very hard thing to do for some people. That some people includes me. <laughs> I think the new year is a great time to start cleaning up my room and my car. Awesome. So let's go to the second place. The runner up is to lose weight. This one might not be much of an issue for you all, but you know, with how much I eat during Christmas season, I might need to look into a gym membership. Hey, invite me too. Since I've been working since last year at home, I seldom move around. I really think I need to get more active physically in 2021. Yes, and that would actually bring us to the number one resolution made on New Year, which is to exercise more. There is no better time to build muscle than the beginning of a year, right? So these are all admirable goals, right? We could all stand to clean up a little bit better, get more exercise, and try new things. There's something else about New Year's resolutions. While millions of people set resolutions, there are very few people who actually finish them. What do you think, Teacher Payam? How many percentage of people do you think actually complete their New Year resolutions? Mm, I guess about... 30%? Great guess, but wrong! 
you might be surprised that actually only 8% of people actually finish their resolutions. That's like, if you have 100 people, only 8 people actually achieve your goal. Oh my God, wow. I wonder why is it that so many people start off with this great plans, but only a few of them would actually succeed. Um, I think the reason people stop working towards their resolutions are because they lose motivation. They have to work really hard and it's really, really hard work. To accomplish anything worthwhile, one must work hard. For so many of us, we lose momentum, we lose motivation, we lose the goal because it is so difficult to achieve. That is true, that is true. But you know what else is hard? Following God. To love God and love other people in a way that they honor Him is tough. However, God knew this was true. So thankfully, the writers of the Bible were inspired to write down several ideas related to working hard including the verses that we're going to explore today. Many of you have heard of David, a young man who defeated Goliath. After David became king, he had many, many kids. One of his sons is called Solomon, who became the next king of Israel at a very young age. Not long after, God came to his dream and told him to ask for anything. Some people expect him to ask for unlimited power, endless wealth, or really long life. But instead, King Solomon asked for wisdom to help him differentiate between right and wrong. God was pleased with this request and granted the young ruler wisdom. From that point on, King Solomon became one of the wisest people who ever lived. Many of his wise sayings were recorded in the Bible, including most of the things in the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs include passages with ideas and phrases that give advice about nearly everything from staying away from troubles to how to treat someone. But some of the most famous saying um, would talk about the value of hard work. In one passage, Solomon actually talks about an ant. Just like teacher Payam, King Solomon also observed how vigorously the end works and he wrote this in Proverbs 6, verse 6 to 8. You people who don't want to work, think about the end. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, it has no leader or ruler, but it stores up its food in summer. It gathers its food at harvest time. Solomon noticed the hard work of an ant hustling to gather food. He was illustrating the importance for us to be responsible by working hard. Another translation of the Bible says it a little differently. This is how it goes. Go to an ant, you sluggard. Consider it ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. The term sluggard is used to contrast the hard work of an ant with those who tend to be lazy. But you may be wondering, what does all these words mean today? To illustrate this, we've asked our pastor, kids pastor, Pastor Agape, to come help us run through a few scenarios with some characters we've created. Anthony and Slugworth. Anthony is an ant. And Slugworth, well, he's a slug. Now, there isn't really a slug in scripture, but there is a lazy person, a slugger. So that who Slugworth will represent. So join me in welcoming Pastor Happy and Chupaya. I mean, Anthony and Slugworth. Woo! Hello. Hi, everyone. I'm Anthony the end. I love to work from Monday to Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Hey, Slugworth, wake up. It's your turn now. Hi guys, um, slot work this slide. My hobby is uh, obviously sleeping. All right, thank you, Anthony and Slugworth, for the introduction. So, Anthony and Slugworth have an essay due in one week. Anthony, how are we going to approach this? 
Well, first, I'll make sure I read the whole book from start to finish. Then, I'll write out a rough draft on Monday, at the on Tuesday, and write the final draft on Wednesday. On Thursday, I'll create an appendix to highlight my favorite quote and to illustrate my favorite scene. Since I will be done a little early, I might take it to my parents or teacher to, to give a quick look over to see if there's anything I miss so I can make sure it's good to go when I turn it on Friday. Good strategy, Anthony. Great time management. How about you, Slugworth? Okay, well, uh, on Monday, I'll probably take a nap to mentally prepare myself to read the book and dip. Sorry. On Tuesday and Wednesday, I might play some video games because after school, because, you know, when I start writing the essay, I might not have enough time to play my Roblox, you know? And then on Thursday, I'll probably read the front cover of the book so I can make sure I would know the title. And on Friday morning, before the class, I'll frantically look up a few written reports online and try to write down a few ideas. Wow, Slugworth, that's really not great at all. Kids. Who do you think will be more likely to get a good grade on this essay? Anthony, yeah, I think so too. Okay, let's go for another example. Tomorrow, Anthony and Slugworth's basketball team are going to play each other. This is an important game. So all the players have to do their very best. Anthony, how will you prepare? I will prepare probably practice my field throws the night before and go to the bed a little earlier than normal. In the morning, I will have a nice cup loaded breakfast and get to the pre-game practice on time to run drills with the team. Very nice. What about you, Slugworth? Well, uh, first thing first, I'll go home and I start binge watching something on Netflix. And I'll probably pick something with 10 to 12 season so I can stay up until 4 a.m. Um, then in this case, I would probably wake up in a panic because I fall asleep in the middle of season eight and accidentally slept in too late and drag my parents into the car to speed up all the way to the game. I'll be eating chocolate bars and energy drinks in a, bas in a back seat to make sure that I'm ready. And if I don't have that jittery uh, feeling, then I think I have done my job right. That's definitely crazy. Slugworth, kids, who do you think will form better in the game? Yeah, definitely Anthony. Wow, such an interesting and completely different answers. All right, anyway, give a big round of applause to Anthony and Slugworth. King Solomon recognizes that ants make up their own mind to work hard. They are not motivated by an allowance or extra screen time. Their hard work pays off with food reserved for the time of shortage. Ants do whatever it takes to keep their colony safe. And you know what's crazy? They know how to get the job done with only about 250,000 brain cells. This is very, very little compared to us human. Yes, we are different. God made us with about 10 million brain cells. It's plain to see God has given us what we need to work strong, smart, and creatively. Because he's given us much, God also expects much of us. We are uniquely wired to accomplish unique goals. We are determined and incredibly gifted to do God's work. We are made in God's image. When we combine what we've been given with hard work, we can show love to God and also the people that God created. 
working hard might look like baking cookies to support a friend in hospital. Sometimes that might look like waking up and straightening up your room before your mom even asked. Or it can look like helping your little sister to put together that massive Lego palace. All we have to do is find inspiration in Jesus. When he came to earth, Jesus knew exactly what he needed to do. He lived a perfect life, performed miracles, taught lots of people, and died on the cross for you and me. Laziness is easy, but working hard is not. Taking the initiative to get the work done instead of waiting for someone to tell you to do that something would require effort. It's important to remember that God gives us what we need to follow through. The Bible is full of insightful truths that sometimes use ants as illustrations. God uses this truth to transform our lives. As you head to hangout sessions later, we want you to consider one question. This question is, when have you had to work hard? How did it feel to accomplish those things? Do you think working hard will help you in the future? Those are big questions, huh? You have a chance to talk more about it with your teachers as well as your friends later on in the hangouts. But before we head out though, let's pray and ask God to help us work hard. Eyes closed, head bowed. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us 10 million brain cells. Lord, I pray that you help us work hard and achieve our unique goals that you have set out for us to do. All of this I pray in Jesus' name. May all the kids say, Amen. Bye, kids. See you next week. Bye-bye. I think Teacher Pagape is on mute. <laughs>